Hi, uh, this is Paul again at uh, The Nourished Hoof. Uh, and in this video today, I'm just gonna talk you through the uh, the bones of the lower limb of a horse. Uh, these are the nine bones of the lower limb. Uh, all of you got horses will instantly recognize the shape of the lower limb of a horse. Uh, this is it. So uh, just gonna go through the names uh, of the bones themselves. The first bone, the most obvious bone is this long bone here. This long bone is known as the third metacarpal in the forelimb and a third metatarsal in the hind limb. It is uh, a long bone and it's the lowest, uh, sorry, it's the longest bone uh, in the lower limb of the horse. On the back of the bone, you can see that there are two uh, smaller bones. This is one of them here. And this is the other one on this side okay and these are known as the splint bones so we've got if we're going to do pony club terms this is what you may know as the cannon bone but it's actually called the third metacarpal these are the second and the fourth metacarpal the second one is on the inside the fourth one is on the outside so we've got the second the third the big one and the fourth on the outside and this is the area where splints develop uh, in a horse uh, in this little joint these these bones are joined by a fibrous joint which is a joint that allows little to no movement uh, <clears throat> aggravation around here can cause bony growths that uh, you know are splints particularly common in young horses while this bone is is still growing this bone has two growth plates in it one at the top one at the bottom uh, that fuse not long after birth uh, once they've grown their set length. Okay, the next bones we're gonna cover are these two bones at the back of the fetlock. There's one of them here on the inside or the medial side, one on the outside or the lateral side, and these are known as the proximal sesamoid bones. These bones act as a fulcrum for the deep flexor tendon and the superficial flexor tendon that runs over them. The suspensory ligament has attachments on the outside and the two tendons run through the middle and the deep goes all the way down to the bottom into the foot. Uh, so these are the proximal sesamoids. The next bone is this bone here. Okay, this bone here is known as the proximal phalanx uh, or common term is P1, uh, which is phalanx one. This is the pastern of a horse. The hoof starts around about this area here. The bottom of this middle bone is inside the hoof and the bottom bone is completely encased in the hoof. So the hoof capsule would be around about where my pen is right now. So you can see that P1 or the proximal phalanx is completely outside of the hoof. Then we've got the middle phalanx, which is the joint is just here where my pen is. This is the joint at the top. Okay, so this is the proximal phalanx. This here is the middle phalanx. You see it's a short bone, a very short bone. And then we've got the distal phalanx, or uh, again, pony club term would be the coffin bone. Coffin because it's completely encased uh, with inside the hoof capsule. And again, there's a lot more to say about these bones, uh, of what they do and the position and some of the unique features of the bone, particularly uh, P3. There's a lot of landmarks in, in the distal phalanx, or P3. We've got the extensor process where one of the tendons attached. We've got the distal border. And interestingly, this distal border that runs all the way around the outside, this is where the white line grows from. There are small terminal papillae at the bottom that project downwards and produce the white line. And then we'd have the hoof capsule uh, on the outside of that, suspending the skeleton inside the hoof, which only leaves one more bone for us to discuss. And the bone in question is this bone just here. I'll turn it around a little bit so you can see. And that bone just here is the distal sesamoid bone or uh, the more common term used for it and one that you will all recognize is the navicular bone okay and it's this bone here that is obviously responsible for navicular disease when this bone becomes diseased or the tissues around it become diseased diseased then uh, the horse will suffer with navicular but it's this little shuttle shaped bone just here on the back of the joint Okay, back of a joint called the distal interphalangeal joint, which is made up of essentially P2, P3, and the navicular bone. Those three bones make up this compound synovial joint right at the bottom of the horse's uh, of the horse's skeleton. So there's a quick uh, five minute tour of the bones of the lower limb. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next one.